crazy about that. I'm not either. We've never done that before, though, and it worked. Try turning it the other way and just see if it does it the same way. Like, turn it to the right. And just, I don't know. I can't. Yeah, all right. Are you able to see it correctly, or do we need to go up and down? Is it coming through okay? Welcome to worship here at First Presbyterian Church of Branchville. Let us worship God. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in God's works. It is God who looks on the earth and it trembles, who touches, touches the, mountains the mountains and they, and they smoke. smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have being. May our, our meditation, meditation be pleasing, pleasing to God for we rejoice in the Lord. Together. Bless, Bless the Lord, Lord, O my soul. Praise, praise the Lord. Lord. Let us pray. We live in an unsettled world, O Lord, with unemployment, a pandemic virus, and racial injustice being protested. It feels on shaky ground. The ground beneath us feels like it's unstable, so help us to stand on you, the rock that never moves. Guide us through these days to hear your voice and to follow your light that leads us onward. Great Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we praise you and pray in your name. Amen. Amen.
the grace of Jesus, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit, we're free to honestly name our feelings, our mistakes, and our sin. We repent and ask for forgiveness, knowing that God desires a humble heart and will forgive. So let us pray our prayer in the bulletin together, followed by our own individual confessions. Let us pray. Lord, Lord God, God, we, we survey, survey our world and see inequality, violence, exploitation, and, and death. Standing by and refusing to engage in soul-searching offends you. Your word tells us to care for the least amongst us, and yet too often we remain silent and aloof. We need your help, Almighty God. We cannot right the wrongs of our world or be free of sin without your loving intervention. We come asking for forgiveness and a renewal of your spirit so that we may help the oppressed and stand courageously on the side of a righteousness. We offer our prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. Hear the good news. God is on our side and stands with us. He has made provision for our sin through Jesus Christ, through his death and through his resurrection. Our sins have been taken care of. They have been put aside. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In, In Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, we, we are, are forgiven. forgiven. Amen. Amen. Responsive reading is Psalm 8. Please join with me. O Lord, our Lord, your greatness is seen in all the world. Your praise reaches up to the heavens. It is sung by children and babies. You are safe and secure from all your enemies. You stop anyone who opposes you. When I look at the sky which you have made, at the moon and the stars which you set in their places, what are, what are human, human beings that you think of them, them mere, mere mortals that you that care you for them. them? Yet you made them inferior only to yourself. You crowned them with glory and honor. You, you appointed, appointed them rulers, rulers over everything, everything you made. made. You, you placed them over all creation. creation. Sheep and cattle and the wild animals too. The birds and the fish and the creatures in the seas. Together. O Lord, o Lord, our, our Lord, Lord, your greatness is seen in all the world. Amen. Amen. Our special music today is from Corinne Martin.
Thank you very much, Corinne. That was wonderful. Oh, you're welcome. And thanks to Kay, our organist and bagpiper. <laughs> Scripture lesson is from the second chapter of Acts, beginning at verse 32. Hear the word of God. This is Peter talking to the crowd. He says, this Jesus raised up, and of that all of us are witnesses. Being therefore exalted at the right hand of God and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured out this that you both may see and hear. For David did not ascend into the heavens, but he himself says, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. Therefore, let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, brothers, what should we do? That ends our lesson. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the apostles, brothers, what should we do? It's been a lot of that going around lately, being cut to the heart. It means we've been deeply moved, emotionally and intellectually challenged to the point that we feel we must do something. Our country is feeling that right now. People of all colors are feeling the challenge of this moment and are cut to the heart have you felt it? I've felt it. The people in our reading felt it when they heard Peter describe the ministry of Jesus Christ, who for his teachings and his challenge of the authority's stranglehold on the religious life of the chosen people was tortured and crucified and killed. Peter then testifies to them that despite all of that, Jesus rose from the dead, ascended into heaven, sits at the right hand of the Father and sends the promised Holy Spirit. He and his fellow disciples have witnessed this and proclaim that Jesus is both Lord and Messiah. And the, and the people respond from a place where they have been deeply moved and ask, what should we do? The citizens of our country are now deeply moved also. We've seen racism happen on handheld phone video enough that folks are now cut to the heart and want to know, what should we do? What should we do? What should we do? For a long time, I didn't feel moved to do anything. I've been hearing references over the past few years of white privilege and wondered what in the heck people were talking about. I worked to get into a good school. I put myself through seminary doing three jobs while going to school full time. I put in the hours and the hard work to get where I am. Which are they talking about? A little over a year ago, we had a speaker at one of our presbytery meetings who went into a little bit of history. History I've never heard before. After the Civil War, the playing field was not level. Have you ever heard of redlining? I hadn't ever heard of it before. Perhaps you have. After the Great Depression in 1934, the FHA, the Federal Housing Authority, wanted to restore the housing market, but did so in an unequal way. They drew up maps of 239 cities in the country using a color-coded system used for homeowners to refinance or get financing to buy a house. Drawing green around a neighborhood in each city meant it was very desirable, an up and coming place to live with no people of color living in it. Blue around a neighborhood was considered still desirable with low risk of infiltration of non-white groups. 
A yellow circled neighborhood meant it was in decline and was considered risky due to the quote, threat of infiltration of foreign born, Negro, or lower grade populations. A red marked area meant hazardous and were almost all of them populated by black or minority residents and were ineligible for FHA loans, leaving them in poverty with no way out. And this wasn't just in the South as you might imagine. It was in Chicago. Can you see the yellow and the blue and the touch of green along the edge there? But all the red areas? It was in Los Angeles. You can see the red over here, some, a lot of yellow, a few touches of blue, and then this little green patch up here at the top. That's Beverly Hills. And all throughout New York City it was done. Here's Brooklyn. You can see a lot of red around it, a little bit of yellow, some blue down the middle, and this one little tiny patch of green over here along the coast. They redlined basically black and minority neighborhoods who weren't just denied housing loans. Schools were less funded. Businesses couldn't get loans. Insurance was much higher. And even supermarkets were denied to those residents. Sociologist John McKnight in the 60s coined the term redlining to describe the discriminatory practice of fencing off areas where banks would avoid investing. If you've ever heard someone talk about an area where some schools are better than others, it probably goes back to the redlining practice of unequally funding school districts. And this practice wasn't abolished officially until 1968 with the Fair Housing Act. But it continued on anyway, with major actions to stop it in 1975, and even in May of 2015, the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development fined the Associated Bank in the Midwest over $200 million for redlining in Chicago and Milwaukee for purposely rejecting mortgage applications of black and Latino residents. Craig Barnes is the president of Princeton Seminary, and in a statement he released this week about the situation going on, he wrote, protests bear witness to the deep pain and righteous anger within our nation not only for justice denied today, but the insidious legacy of racism that continues to choke the black community. In other words, the system was stacked in the favor of whites. Whether I knew it or not, we're talking about systemic problems. We're talking about racism, systemic racism. And I think we can all agree that any ism is wrong. Lumping people together in a way denies their individual humanity. Have you ever been lumped into a group due to some similarity you have with them and then been, den then been denigrated because of it? Maybe it's your hair color or your skin color or your occupation or a talent you have like others. I think right now there's a lot of that going on with the police, who all wear similar uniforms, and because a small minority of those wearing that uniform have acted badly, then folks are saying all cops are bad. That's just not so. I wear a clergy uniform, and because I do, some, Ill, some think ill of me because of it, because a few pastors and priests have done bad things. Someone once heard that I was a pastor and asked me, did you go into the ministry because you like little boys? I think he was trying to be funny, but it wasn't funny at all. So what do we do to fight racism or any other kind of ism out there? Micah, the Old Testament prophet says in his sixth chapter, that God has told us what is good and what is required of us to do. And that is to do justice and to love kindness 
and to walk humbly with our God. Three steps that are not so simple as we've seen on the news. Doing justice can be a long, hard process. Martin Luther King Jr. said, every step toward the goal of justice requires sacrifice, suffering, and struggle. The tireless exertions and passionate concern of dedicated individuals. What can we do now, though, to make things better? I read the words of Canadian hockey player Connor McDavid yesterday that may point us in a direction. He wrote, as I have watched the many protests against racism and social injustice that have been taking place around the world, I realize that I need to do more to educate myself, that I need to do more, I need to learn more about the history of racism in our countries, referring to both Canada and the United States, and to listen to the voices and the perspectives of the black community and other racial minorities to try and understand how I can help to affect positive change going forward. That's a place to start. Just as I'd never heard of redlining until a year or so ago, I'm sure there are other systemic policies and practices that have been operating without my knowledge for all of my life. Like Connor, the hockey player, I need to be better educated. I'd like to conclude with a, a little story right out of the headlines that might, may point us in a direction and give us a little bit of hope. In Louisville, Kentucky, Officer Galen Hinshaw responded to a call for help just two nights ago from a fellow officer whose cruiser had been surrounded by a crowd of angry protesters. He drove as close as he could and got out to go help, but was himself immediately surrounded by a crowd which began to grow. He made his way to a pizzeria so he could put his back against the wall. And the crowd pressed in on him, hollering, are you one of the good ones? How do you think we feel? And he tried to respond back sympathetically, but was drowned out by the yelling and the sirens going off all around. He knew that if one person stepped forward to confront him physically, he was going to get injured by the crowd prepared himself for a nasty confrontation. The, lucky can, the local Kentucky paper reports that it was at that moment that a black man wearing a University of Kentucky mask over half of his face stepped between the officer and the crowd and turned his back to Galen and faced the crowd in order to protect him from the mob. Another man saw that and stepped in between also. The crowd began yelling at the two men, how can you defend him? But when they saw what was happening, three more men stepped in and eventually linked arms, creating a human wall between the crowd and the officer. The whole confrontation lasted less than two minutes before the crowd went away. And Hinshaw, the officer said, if they didn't intervene, something was gonna happen to me. He said, I've cried over that incident. It was a moment when strangers came together to help another stranger, and that stranger was me. And so, we too remember that in Jesus Christ, we have someone who stepped between us and sin, offering his life to save ours. That's what we celebrate here at this table, remembering that in him, we do have the answer to that question, what should we do? The answer is, do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with your God. Let us pray. Be with our country, Lord, and help us to find a better way forward that is fair and kind and helpful to all of us. Help our country move closer to our ideals of equality, and become a place where each person may grow and thrive and become the best that we were created to be. We ask this in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
us use the words of the Apostles' Creed to state our faith. I believe, I believe in God, God the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived, conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was, was crucified, crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third, into heaven. the third day he, he rose again from the dead. dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father, Father Almighty. From, from thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy, Holy Ghost, the, the Holy Catholic, Catholic Church, the, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. We're truly glad that you're here with us. We welcome both visitors and regular members. I'd like to remind you that today is a communion Sunday, so please have your communion elements ready in just a little bit, your bread and your juice or wine. I'd like to mention two announcements to highlight this morning. The first is that we give to a local charity each quarter, and this quarter's local mission is to the community's little helpers. This is a group formed for kids aged up to age 12 who are learning the value of community service. They make goodie bags for children at the hospital, they sing at a local nursing home, they make crafts and gifts for no those in need, and much more. So any you give toward this quarter's local mission goes to help youngsters learn how to be kind to others. It's a great cause. The second is that next Sunday is Youth Sunday. Typically, the Sunday school does a play and sings and gives out pins and certificates. But since they're all at home, that won't be happening. What we will do is to share some slides of three young people who have grown up here in this church and are now ready to graduate from high school. They'll each present a short video about their time at this church after we see their slideshow, and that will be next week's message. That evening, in addition, we'll meet for an online youth group meeting and conclude our honors of them then. So please check back here next week and we'll have a virtual Youth Sunday. This week for prayer concerns, I will list them now and we'll take time in silence to offer our prayers for them followed by a litany prayer printed in your bulletin. So, this week, let's pray for Joyce O and Joyce P, Ruth Morrow, Beth, Aaron, and Ethan, Ken and Michelle, Karen and Buddy, John P, Jack, Greg, Amy, Dave, and Josh, and Linda, Corinne, Sherry, Irene, Gail M, and Sharon Lee Schaefer. We thank you for the good news about Grandma Rowe and for the good news about Corinne's father surviving COVID-19. But we ask for your mercy and grace for Lorraine who has now been diagnosed with it. We're grateful to hear of, uh, the, that the spots on Abigail's lungs have gone away. But we pray for Larry, the son of a Sussex County resident who is a police officer in Charlotte, North Carolina, and was hit in the head by a brick during a riot and has needed surgery. Be with Les Van Orden, who has hip replacement surgery on Monday, and Judy Olchinsky, that she recover well from shoulder surgery. Hear our prayers, Lord, now in the silence. Let us pray. Let us join together now in the litany prayer. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness. God saw everything that he had made. And indeed, and indeed it, was it was very, very good. good. Creator God, you created us for fellowship with you and with one another. 
You created us free, free to enjoy your gift of life together, free also to destroy our relationships and one another. Loving God, save us from ourselves. And grant us courage to work for peace with justice for all. God said, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. Jesus said, you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. Remind us, O oh God, that there are other ways to keep people in bondage than at the point of a sword or a gun. And that the, and that truth, the truth others hear as the trumpet, trumpet of liberation may be a truth we find hard, hard to, hear. to hear. Loving God, save us from ourselves. And teach, and teach us, us to us share, to the, share blessing the blessing and the responsibilities of freedom with all. Jesus said, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. He also said, do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. The peace our Lord promises is peace in the midst of strife. It is the inner peace of those who risk themselves in uneven battle. Loving God, save us from ourselves and let us experience this peace. O oh God, we pray for peace among the nations, peace among the races, peace within our families, and peace within ourselves. So that prejudice, discord, and hate may begin to wither at their roots. And that all of your children may at last enjoy an age of peace in obedience to our living Lord, the Prince of Peace. Amen. Amen. In thanksgiving and joy, we worship God with our morning offerings. to do justice and love kindness and walk humbly with you. We pray that these gifts represent our desire to do those things faithfully every day. Bless our offerings and help our efforts this week be salt and light for the world. In your name, amen. Amen.
Friends, this is the joyful feast of the people of God. We come from north and south and east and west to join together here at this table to, to remember that we are invited by God to be a part of his holy, loving family, that he is our loving parent, and we are his children. So all who trust in Jesus Christ as their Lord are invited to participate in this meal. On the night in which he was betrayed, after supper, he took the bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them. Let's join in the litany of thanksgiving as it's printed in the bulletin. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Let us pray. It is right and a good and joyful thing to always and everywhere give you thanks, Lord God. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turn away and our love fails, your love remains steadfast. With your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join the unending hymn, saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son Jesus, who was anointed by the Spirit to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. Through the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made a new covenant with us by water and the Spirit. By his suffering and death on the cross, our sins are forgiven. And raising from the dead, he won for us victory over death. We praise you for Christ and for us that nourishes our souls and strengthens our will to do your loving work in this world. Hear us now as we pray the prayer Jesus taught us when we say, Our Father, our Father who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our debts as, as we forgive our debtors. debtors. And, and lead us not to temptation, temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And after breaking the bread, Jesus turned to his disciples and said, this, this bread, this is my body, which is broken for you. Whenever you do this, do so remembering me. And so ministering in his name, we offer you this bread, saying this, is the body of Christ. Let's join in communing now with our bread. same way after supper he took the cup and after giving thanks gave it to them saying this cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins whenever you do this do so remembering me so ministering in his name we offer you this cup saying this is the blood of Christ Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for inviting us to your table of amazing grace. Thank you for being here with us and go with us as we leave to be your people, newly strengthened, newly filled with your goodness, newly resolved to live life that reflects your values and priorities. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
let us go and do justice. Let us go and love kindly. Let us go and walk humbly with our Lord. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, who is with us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Amen.